Good morning, Bulldog fans, and welcome to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. I'm Mike Orr, and we're glad you've joined us today. With me is our head men's basketball coach, Nick McDevitt, starting his first year at UNC Asheville. Nick, great to have you with you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Nick, tell us your background. You're a local product. UNC Asheville is fortunate to have both its basketball coaches being local products. You from Madison County, of course, Brendan Mock, Kirkpatrick, who we'll meet later, is from over in Waynesville. But tell us your background. Uh, well, as you mentioned, Mike, I am from local uh, Madison County. I grew up in Marshall, North Carolina, uh, attended Madison High School, and um, decided to stay home. And uh, I've called the Asheville area in western North Carolina home all my life. Uh, my um, extended family is from the area, both on my dad's side and my mom's side. So uh, western North Carolina, uh, Madison County, and this, uh, this whole region is home to me. You had a great high school career at Madison High School, leading the Patriots to two straight regional appearances. And uh, why UNC Asheville? Why'd you pick UNC Asheville to come play here? Because you had some other options. I did. Uh, you know, I, I guess as most 17-year-olds, you and you're thinking about going off to college. And so, uh, right before I graduated, I uh, was just looking around at, at different opportunities, different colleges, different universities, but. Um, I honestly found that what I was looking for was right here in my backyard. Uh, fell in love with the campus, fell in love with the people here, uh, Coach Biedenbach and the staff that he had at that time, uh, the guys that became my teammates, uh, just great people, a great place, and uh, it turned out that I didn't have to go too far from home to find what I was looking for. You played from 1997 through the 2001 season, uh, some good Bulldog teams, two teams that got to the Big South Conference a championship game, won a regular season title, of course, in your freshman year. And then when you graduated, you decided to get into college coaching, which wasn't the plan to start out with, but, uh, but why, college, why college coaching and under coaching? Well, I, honestly, I, I, I wanted to be a college coach. I thought, uh, I, I shouldn't say I thought, I knew that that's where my heart was, that's what I wanted to do. I just thought that it might uh, take a different path. At the time, uh, my thinking was I would go back to, to high school, be a high school basketball coach, uh, teach in high school. I was a teaching fellow here at UNC Asheville. Uh, but as uh, plans had it, one of my assistant coaches took another job, and Coach Biedenbach kept me on his staff uh, immediately after graduating and uh, enjoyed 12 years working alongside him. And you were here for 12 great years, started out as an assistant coach, and the last two years you were uh, the associate head coach of the Bulldog program. And what are some of your great memories this time as, uh, uh, next to Coach Biedenbach's time? Uh, well, obviously the, the, those big memorable games that you, you think back to from 2003, uh, the first ever NCAA appearance in school history, uh, enjoying that whole process, being down in uh, Birmingham, uh, playing the University of Texas. Uh, it was just a, a great experience, and obviously the championship runs of the last couple of years. Um, playing in the NCAA tournament is, is really uh, exciting. It's uh, the goal of a lot of athletes, um, and so those, those kind of memories will always stick out for me, ones that I will cherish. We've always had some big wins over uh, some BCS programs over the last few years from Auburn to South Carolina to St. John's. Uh, playing in foreign trips such as in the Bahamas and Puerto Rico. So we've had a lot of exciting times over the last 10, 12, 15 years and we're looking forward to uh, continuing that tradition. Now you were named as UNC Asheville's head basketball coach when Coach Beaton by decided to go to uh, UNC Wilmington. Tell me a little bit about the transition from assistant coach to head coach. There's definitely a transition, isn't there? There definitely is a transition. Uh, you know, I, as I told uh, several people over the last six months, it's uh, the biggest difference now you're making decisions instead of suggestions. And uh, fortunately for me, I've got a great staff, a uh, great sounding board to bounce ideas off of. They always bring great ideas to me. So I'm very fortunate uh, to have Jared Rone, Brett Carey, Sean Dixon, uh, Madison Davis here on my staff. Uh, great guys, very enthusiastic about basketball, but also guys that are enthusiastic and energetic about being here at UNC Asheville. So I'm very lucky in that regard. All right, we'll be back with more with Coach McDevitt. We'll take a look at this year's team right after this timeout. It's the best time of the year. It's time for UNC Asheville Bulldog Basketball. UNC Asheville's legacy is what drives us and brings us to the dawn of a new era. Bring your family to watch exciting NCAA men's and women's basketball. 
Tickets are affordable. Get your tickets now because it's your city and your team. If you sometimes take the long route just to see what you might discover, If you enjoy finding the art in science, and the science in art. If you want to design a career and not just find a job. If you won't give up until you figure it out, then we have just the place for you. University of North Carolina, Asheville. Pepsi, born here, raised by Panthers fans everywhere. Raise your Pepsi for a chance to win the ultimate fan experience. See specially marked 18 packs or visit PepsiRaisedHere.com to learn more. Welcome back to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. Joined by UNC Asheville head men's basketball coach Nick McDevitt. Coach, uh, when we look at this year's team, you know, obviously the Bulldogs lost Jeremy uh, Atkinson to graduation. Keith Hornsby uh, decided to transfer to LSU, your two top scorers. But you've got a lot of new faces on this team. So uh, tell us a little bit about what that's been like in practice. Well, as, as you mentioned, we are in somewhat of a, a year of transition. Uh, this team is going to look much different than the teams over the last several years. Um, the, the championship teams of 2011, 2012, uh, relatively small teams when you think about college basketball teams in terms of size, things like that. Uh, this team, I would argue, is a relatively big team. And so we've, uh, we've had to change a couple of things, uh, things from our operating methods all the way to some of our offensive and defensive schemes because our personnel is a lot different than, than it has been in the past. And uh, we've been excited, very encouraged about the progress our, our team has been making over the first several weeks here and uh, looking forward to the season. When, when one looks at your schedule, well, one thing we notice is not any home games until, until December, to December 12th against Bluefield. The first eight games will be away from home. Not all, not all at opponent's sites is because we'll be playing the preseason NIT, hopefully in New York City, uh, for the semifinals and finals. But you open up at Kentucky, who's supposed to be okay this year. They're supposed to bounce back from that NIT season last year. So that'll be a great opener, won't it? We've, we've heard a little bit about that team this year. Um, you know, playing at the University of Kentucky to open the season, uh, it's going to be certainly something our guys will remember for a long time uh, in a historic arena like Rupp Arena, playing against one of the top recruiting classes in the history of college basketball, uh, the preseason number one team in the country. Uh, so that's going to be a special evening, but uh, we want to go in there and compete. I mean, um, we're not just there to, to play the game and come home with a check. Uh, they are called guarantee games for a reason, but uh, we're going in there to, to try to compete. As you mentioned, those, the first eight games are on the road, very difficult, um, including the preseason NIT at Duke. Uh, another historic arena, as Cameron Indoor Stadium is, uh, another top five opponent. So it's, it will be a, a challenging, but also an exciting preseason or early season schedule. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Kentucky with a one game losing streak against Big South opponents when they open at home, of course, that lost to VMI a couple years ago. So hopefully the Bulls can make it two in a row against Kentucky. But yeah, like I said, your first eight are away from home, but you, you know, right after Kentucky, you, you go to Western Carolina, and that's a big game as well. It is uh, one that we look forward to. Uh, it's a local rivalry game. Uh, it, it's good for the community, good for the students, good for the alumni uh, of both campuses. Uh, they've got a great university, and we feel like we do as well, and uh, they've got a lot of guys returning. Uh, they were a very good basketball team last year, uh, and, and with the return of Trey Sumler, I mean, he's a great player, and uh, they'll have a good basketball team. So uh, the start of the schedule being at Kentucky, at Western Carolina, at College of Charleston, at Duke, uh, will be challenging, uh, but we're getting ready for it. It should be exciting, no question about that, Nick. But one thing is we do have a home game. It's an exhibition game against Brevard on Monday, November the 4th at 7 o'clock here at Kimmel Arena. And Brevard's been a good test for us. And, you know, it was about four years ago they knocked us off in an exhibition game. And, and, um, and under new coaching, uh, they've definitely improved the last couple of years. So what are you looking for in an exhibition game like that? Well, I think, first of all, um, 
anytime you scrimmage an opponent or have exhibition games, uh, you do want to compete, but you also want to learn a lot about your team. Uh, what rotations work well, what matchups work well. Uh, so yes, we are in there to compete. We want to win. We want to win scrimmage games, exhibition games, regular season games, non-conference games, conference games. Uh, we want to compete. We want to win. Uh, but first and foremost, we, we want to go in there uh, and learn. Uh, we do want to learn a lot about our team. As, as you mentioned earlier, a lot of new faces. And so it'll be kind of the first time that there's uh, fans in the stands uh, here at Kimmel Arena and uh, the lights are on. We will be relying on some freshmen and some sophomores uh, to play heavy minutes for us this year. So it'll be a good test for them uh, before we head to Rupp Arena uh, a few days later. All right, Nick, thanks so much for stopping by and talking to us. We look forward to talking to you uh, next week when we'll kind of go more into the personnel that's on this year's club and we'll look at where the Big South picked us in the preseason poll and we look forward to looking ahead to the season a little bit more uh, next week. All right, we'll be back with more with head UNC Hatch women's basketball coach Brendan Mockford Patrick right after this Bulldog timeout. These are the Sultans of Shirts versus Skins. The graceful gods of imaginary buzzer beaters. Where win or go home means a walk through the garage. And your shining moment is spelled H-O-R-S-E. Welcome to the dance, Cinderella, and let the madness begin. Ingles, your official sponsor of Driveway Basketball. Zaxby's, indescribably good. It's the best time of the year. It's time for UNC Asheville Bulldog Basketball. UNC Asheville's legacy is what drives us and brings us to the dawn of a new era. Bring your family to watch exciting NCAA men's and women's basketball. Tickets are affordable. Get your tickets now because it's your city and your team. Welcome back to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. I'm now joined by the head women's basketball coach of the Bulldogs, Brenda Mock Kirkpatrick, in her second season here at UNC Asheville. Brenda, thanks so much for joining us today. Great to have you here. Well, thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Brenda, your local product, like Nick McDevitt, played at Tuscola High School, had a great career there. Tell us more about your background from over in Haywood County. Well, obviously grew up, born and raised in Waynesville, North Carolina. Went to Tuscola High School, was a three-sport athlete there, obviously excelling in basketball, and that gave me the most opportunities, obviously, for playing at the next level. And uh, after I finished at Tuscola, decided to continue my career at Wake Forest University in the ACC, and um, really enjoyed that experience there. Why did you decide to go to Wake Forest? Well, Mike, I really wanted to play in the ACC. That was my dream. Obviously, grew up loving ACC basketball, both men's and women's. Obviously, back then, there was you know, a whole lot more TV coverage for the men's basketball program, so I grew up a staunch Carolina fan. Wanted to play in the ACC myself. Had a few opportunities. It came down to NC State, Georgia Tech, and Wake Forest, and just felt like academically and uh, athletically that Wake Forest was the best fit for me. You had an excellent career at Wake Forest, and then and then decided to play in France for a year. How exciting was that? Well, I was fortunate enough. Uh, one of my assistants at Wake Forest knew an agent over in France who uh, found a, a job for me, and uh, really wasn't expecting to have that opportunity as a collegiate player, um, but worked really hard and loved that experience in France. You know, there's many days when I'm coaching, especially when I was a young coach, when I wondered why that I uh, that I chose to go into coaching instead of staying in professional basketball. But you know, for me, it was just culturally and um, really just a great experience to be over there and really enjoyed that. Now after you came back from France, you decided to get into coaching. Uh, you worked at Jacksonville, Georgia Tech, and uh, UNC Charlotte, and then Florida, and just uh, how, are, how did all those experiences help you? Oh wow, uh, those experiences really made me the coach I am today. Um, was fortunate enough right after playing in France, I was actually going to go back to France and I came home for the summer and Agnes Baronado was the coach at Georgia Tech then. 
and she had recruited me, obviously. Right. So uh, she offered me a position there, and just really fortunate at such a young age to have an entry-level position as an ACC coach. Went on to Jacksonville after that, and as you said, UNC Charlotte in Florida, uh, where I worked for a coach. Uh, Amanda Butler and uh, worked for her and with her for seven years and she's just outstanding. Uh, really taught me a lot about the game. Obviously loved being in the SEC. Uh, another great conference especially for women's basketball and um, was fortunate enough you know a couple of years ago for Janet to give me a call to give me the opportunity to come be the head coach here at Asheville which is back at home for me. Why this job? Uh, two years ago when Janet called you, what brought you home? Well, first of all, Mike, this uh, UNC Asheville is just such a, an amazing place. It's such an amazing institution academically, um, where we're located in uh -huh. an amazing city. Um, I think now in this arena, um, you know, we have all the pieces here to become really a, a men's and women's basketball powerhouse and really be successful consistently year after year and compete for championships here. And what I saw was just an amazing opportunity, not only for me personally to come back to uh, Asheville and to come back to Western North Carolina, but an opportunity for this university to really grow its women's basketball program into an, a consistent powerhouse. Now, last year was a tough year, a lot of injuries and oh, stuff. Yeah. And, you, and you've told me several times, you've told other people this, that last year made you a better coach <laughs> and your and coaching staff a better coaching staff. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, you look for the silver lining in everything. <laughs> uh, and with our record, it was uh, a little bit tougher. But, you know, with injuries, and uh, also managing sort of um, a growing mentality. You know, when I arrived here, these girls had been through a lot already. Uh, they had had some losing seasons, and it's just difficult to generate the confidence and the winning mentality and the approach and the expectation. And um, so as I was uh, trying to accomplish that here with the young ladies, and then also, um, you know, develop them as basketball players. As soon as we started getting some of our rhythm together, then we started having all of the injuries, um, which really for us, because we had to make so many adjustments as a staff, um, made us a better coaching staff. And going through hard times, it is true. It is going to make you better if you grow from it and have the right perspective. And I really believe that our entire organization last year from the coaching staff down had the right approach and attitude and response to that adversity. All right, we'll be back with more. We'll be back with more with head coach Brenda Mockenbecker right after this Bulldog timeout. It's the best time of the year. It's time for UNC Asheville Bulldog basketball. UNC Asheville's legacy is what drives us and brings us to the dawn of a new era. Bring your family to watch exciting NCAA men's and women's basketball. Tickets are affordable. Get your tickets now because it's your city and your team. My name is Lauren Tamayo, silver medalist, London 2012 for track cycling. We started the project of building the home with Home Trust a year and a half before London. My husband designed the house. When I would be on the road traveling, I would be looking at lights and paint colors help keep my mind off of the training. Some mornings it's definitely hard to go outside when it's early and cold. It's kind of like a whole body hurt, how your legs and how you're breathing and your heart rate's going so high that you feel like your heart's gonna just jump out of your chest, but you have to find that motivation. When I'm out there pushing myself beyond the limit, definitely think about coming home to my husband and my family and my, my new puppy that I have. My home is what centers me, so I can keep pursuing my goals. My home trust mortgage fits me. An equal housing lender, member FDIC. At Zaxby's, all of our salads are made fresh to satisfy any craving. Like the blue, with a bold taste of real blue cheese and buffaloed or blackened chicken. The house, or the Caesar. With so many flavor pack choices, you'll be seeing salad in a whole new way. Guess someone forgot to tell us that salads are supposed to be boring. Zaxby's, indescribably good. Welcome back to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update, joined by head women's basketball coach Brenda Mockrick. Patrick, coach, how's practice going? It's going fantastic. I um, always love to talk about practice because we're really growing. And um, obviously we have one year under our belt with the nine returners that we had from last year's team. And then we have four outstanding freshmen who are really going to have their fingerprints all over this program before it's said and done. 
16 home games this mm -hmm. year, four in December. Uh, that has to be very exciting for, uh, for, a, uh, for a young basketball team to play a lot at home. Uh, did you do this by designation to do this? Really did do this by design. Um, we only have one senior on this year's team, Abra Sickles, so we are very young. And um, I think it'll be great. Our, our kids love playing here, and who wouldn't? I mean, right. this is an amazing arena, one of the best in the conference, and really um, one of the best in the nation for this size. Absolutely. And um, so that'll be exciting, and they're obviously comfortable here. We, we shoot better here, and generally teams in, uh, usually play better at home. Um, so we're excited about that, and did design it that way. Obviously, next year it'll be a little bit different, because I'll have a lot of return games. <laughs> But we'll have a veteran team, so um, yeah, we're excited about our schedule this year. Opening game, Furman on November the mm -hmm. 9th. We'll go. We'll look at more as we get close to that game. But uh, but a good game against a good Southern Conference team to open the season on November 9th. Absolutely. You know, Jackie and I were talking, and this is a series. I think that Furman and UNC Asheville used to play a couple of years ago, yeah. and something that we want to do going forward. We're so close, and obviously they do a really good job down at Furman, and uh, love those Southern Conference battles, uh, right. Big South Southern Conference battles. So we actually play Furman. We're going to play Western as we do every year, and then also Wofford in the Southern Conference as well. And one of the highlights of your schedule in December is a trip to Nashville to take on <laughs> Vanderbilt. And of course, you know about that uh, from your days in Florida. And just talk about uh, uh, why you schedule that game and what it'll be for our program. Well, you know, I really like to give our kids an opportunity to play against the best. And I do believe that Vandy and Melanie Balkum, you know, do it really the right way. And um, it'll be a, a big challenge for us. Uh, you said a highlight on the schedule. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know about that. We'll see. Um, I think it'll be a really good experience for our kids on the road. Um, you know, that gymnasium is really one of the toughest to play in uh, in the nation um, just by design. And obviously that game will be after we've had some other non-conference games underneath our belt. So hope, obviously we'll have generated hopefully some confidence and some wins and can really go in there and, and give them a challenge. But um, overall, it'll be a really good experience for our kids. We'll talk more about your personnel and the Big South Conference next week. But, uh, but as we close out here, you open conference play in early December. What's your thoughts on that and, and, and how will that, what kind of challenge will that be for your club? Well, it's an absolute necessity now that we're playing 20 conference games. I think the men have 16 and we have 20. So we play everybody uh, twice. So we absolutely have to start in that first week of December. You know, we're on the road um, at Charleston Southern and actually we have conference games as bookends on our exam schedule week. So uh, ta-da, that's great scheduling right there. Actually, I had nothing to do with that. Um, but that'll be a challenging week for our kids. We'll go to Charleston Southern, we'll come back here, we'll play USC Upstate, and then head out to Campbell to play our second conference game. But we're really excited. Um, you know, I'm glad that we're playing everybody twice. Right. Uh, I was on board with that decision and um, really think it's a great opportunity for us to go on the road and, and see what we're made of on Dece in December. Brenda, what's the key to having a good season this year for the Bulldogs? Well, I think that just working together as a team, you know, everybody's number one role on our team is to be a great teammate. And uh, I think that if we focus on that and keep that our primary responsibility and really work for consistency, we're going to have a great year. All right, Brenda, thanks so much for stopping on by. That's head UNC Asheville women's basketball coach Brenda Mock Kirkpatrick joining us today. And we'll talk more next week, as I mentioned, about the Bulldog personnel and about, uh, and about where the Bulldogs have been picked in the Big South Conference race. We'll talk more with Bulldog Update right after this timeout. These are the sultans of shirts versus skins. The graceful gods of imaginary buzzer beaters. Where win or go home means a walk through the garage. And your shining moment is spelled H-O-R-S-E. Welcome to the dance, Cinderella, and let the madness begin. Ingles, your official sponsor of Driveway Basketball. If you sometimes take the long route just to see what you might discover, If you enjoy finding the art in science, and the science in art. If you want to design a career and not just find a job. If you won't give up until you figure it out, then we have just the place for you. University of North Carolina, Asheville.
It's the best time of the year. It's time for UNC Asheville Bulldog Basketball. UNC Asheville's legacy is what drives us and brings us to the dawn of a new era. Bring your family to watch exciting NCAA men's and women's basketball. Tickets are affordable. Get your tickets now because it's your city and your team. Welcome back to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. Hi, I'm Mike Grow with a look at what's happening today at UNC Asheville Athletics and this week in UNC Asheville Athletics. Today is highlighted by the women's soccer team. They're playing their final home game of the season at Greenwood Field in a key Big South Conference battle against Longwood. Game time is at 2 o'clock at Greenwood Field. Tickets are $5 and $3, $5 for adults and $3 for children. Today is senior day for the women's soccer team as UNC Asheville will say goodbye to Amanda Knapp and Kristen Lawson, two four-year players who have had good careers for the Bulldogs. UNC Asheville will try to send those two out with a victory. Bulldog teams are on the road for the most part today as the men's soccer team will play a pivotal Big South Conference battle at VMI starting at 1 o'clock. And then the volleyball team is also in action at Coastal Carolina. That's a rematch of last year's memorable Big South Conference battle. The Shana Clears edge the Bulldogs in four sets. Bulldog volleyball looking for revenge against the Shana Clears today on the road. And our swimming team, Elizabeth Likens, will have a dual meet up at Marshall this afternoon. And the Bulldogs trying to get their second dual win of the season when they take on the Thundering Herd. This week at home for Bulldog Athletics includes the men's soccer team is home for their second to last home game as they'll take on Northern Kentucky for the first time in school history. That's at Greenwood Field at 3 o'clock on Wednesday, October 30th. The men's soccer team will have their last home game a week from today when they take on Coastal Carolina, who's ranked sixth in the country. Your UNC Asheville volleyball team is home as well. Next weekend, the Bulldog volleyball team will take on High Point starting at 7 o'clock at Justice Center, and then the next day we'll take on Campbell, two very important Big South Conference battle for the UNC Asheville volleyball team as they try to move up in the conference standings and try to, and try to get a top four finish for the second time in three years as head coach Federico Santos's team having a good season so far this season. Already have won more matches than they did all of last season. Bulldogs hope to get two wins next weekend as well. UNC Asheville tickets are still on sale for men's and women's basketball. If you want to get some, you can go to uncabulldogs.com or call Harmon Turner, our ticket manager, at 828 258-7900. For Bulldog season tickets, still have some left, so give Harmon a call if you're looking for tickets. That's going to do it this week for UNC Asheville Bulldogs Update. We appreciate Brenda Mockrick, Patrick, and Nick McDevitt joining us. Join us next week when we look ahead to UNC Asheville Bulldog men's and women's basketball.